All right, so we're sitting here with Jacob, the, <laughs> the hillbilly hammer couch, fresh off, fresh off the plane. He's actually wearing the same shorts that he competed with against the incredible Bruno Matias. So what we're gonna do today with the hammer here is he's gonna watch the match and he's basically just gonna break down his thoughts and he's going to just just kind of tell you guys what was going through his mind while the match was going on. Um, my guess it will be some type of biscuit or do combination um something food related um before he realizes that he's in a jiu-jitsu match and decides to tap the guy out because all right so bruno's coming in with the outside passing this goes on the same thing you guys just saw for those three seconds this goes on for a few more minutes just press play let them watch let them watch what's happening okay so you guys see he's outside passing and then so re rewind it a little bit actually okay. So we wind it back to the front right when he's so kind of just like what's going through your head here when guys are doing this to you when they're uh you know getting the match ready you decide to pull guard what's kind of going through your head here uh to keep everything tight because i know a lot of guys with the outside passing like to jump over or jump through so keeping the elbow connected to the knee on the inside and keeping an angle to keep him from getting around my hips necessarily. So I'm keeping my elbow on the inside so he can't get inside anywhere here. He's gonna stay on the outside so I can't get under his hips for the leg lock threat. So he's just gonna dance here for a minute and uh, keep his hands on my ankles to keep my hips from being able to get under. Again, with the club and the outside passing, he's just kinda seeing if he has any, can find any openings there. So I'm just keeping my elbows tight making sure I'm aware of where his head and where his hips are the whole time here. So. And what's, what's the mentality with a guy like that who seems like he's obviously scared of the leg locks, he keeps disengaging you, so what's going through your head as he keeps just not running away, but, you know, just he's respecting the leg locks heavily? Um, it's it's uh, my – Heath always tells me – he just says laser focus, and that's kind of like – that's really all I'm thinking about is just stay focused. I just know if I keep coming forward, I stay focused, I'll get what I need to get to eventually. So I don't get, I don't, I try, I try my best not to let myself get frustrated if they are uh, consistently backing up or consistently circling. I just stay focused on the, on the task at hand. And that's either getting under or just getting to some kind of submission to look to finish the match. So finally, getting him to close guard. Now, now what's he, going through your head? He he comes into the close guard, and uh, immediately feel he's kind of hesitant to open up necessarily. So he he body locks me, which is irrelevant from a close guard, by the way. It doesn't work. Um, but he he keeps the body lock enough to where I, I couldn't really uh, get any kind of offense going for a few seconds. So so I'm opening my legs there to, and I look at Gabriel. That's the ref. I said, Gabriel, he's not. You know, you got to do something. And then Gabriel told him, he said, you got to do something. So then I was like, all right, cool. I'm going to sit up. I'm going to wrap his head up like a pig in a blanket. I lock my hands here, and then he he's trying to get his fingers in between my fingers, but he can't open my hands. I was able so to get... So pause it real quick. So what what's the grip? Show us the grip you had right there. So... Underneath I, his chin I right there. I sat up here. Uh-huh cupped it and then I closed my fist and I just got instead of even going for the wrist because his yeah. hands were inside of here I went like kind of for the the knuckles on my hand and just scooted my hand down to where it was here so this is what the hand your hands were like this right now here right here right there okay so press play and then if you guys uh if you guys look at the position here of the elbows there there's like a line so you have to use keep them here you have to keep like this shape with your upper body and cut an angle instead of like trying to just pry his head straight off. You have to cut the angle and use your legs kind of to get okay. your body into them to finish. So okay. here. So pause here, pause here. Go back. Pause. Oh, shit. Pause. I'm messing up. Here we go. Oh, it tapped. Okay, so rewind a little bit. I just, let's see. Now that, that face there, <laughs> where it looks like maybe you've been constipated for a few days. Um, is that necessary for the technique to work? It's definitely necessary. Uh, my bowels become a little stopped up when I do make 85. So that's, that's kind of one of the undiscovered truths of uh, middleweight for me. Um, 
So I'm really just making sure I don't shit myself here. You know what I mean? <laughs> you, were not, you were squeezing. I was squeezing him with uh, everything in my body, my intestines, uh, liver, kidneys, bladder, everything. So I was just trying to make sure I didn't really excrete any of those or <laughs> do something that would embarrass myself. So I was just trying to finish the guillotine, squeezing him, squeezing him, and I heard him go. The reason I knew it and the reason I made that face actually is because I heard him go. <laughs> Ah, uh, okay. And I just kept going. And kept so, you, so you knew to keep chasing it, right? Mm -hmm. And he was telling me it was tight, so I always try to listen to what he says. Boom, then he taps. All right. You know, I like this calmer, more composed couch. <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. <laughs> Now, what was going through your head here? I'm about to get paid, boy. I'm about to make that <laughs> dough, son. <laughs> What's my check? I need that Tezos coin, son. Nah, I was like, uh, I was, was really happy about uh, being able to, it always feels good, man, just to perform good, not just for myself, but like for for Heath, kind of, it's like, it's like in a way, it's like my way of paying him back because I don't have much I can give him, so... Anytime I can go out there and have a good performance like that, I feel like it's uh, it's probably the most sincere way I could ever try to re repay him. Even though I I know I can't, I won't ever be able to. Awesome. Well, what do you think about showing us the technique, giving us a breakdown of the whole thing? Let's do it. I right, got so couch here, um, literally. Just got back from who's number one and uh he's gonna break down give us a technique all the secret details on how to get this closed guard guillotine um that he just hit so i'll just let him take it away all right guys so something you want to look for uh when going for this is you want to you want to try to use your legs first to bring them forward right so you don't want to just take and like kind of keep a low guard or keep your knees like really far from their shoulders down here. You want to kind of try to get them uh, more towards the middle of their body or, or as far uh, close to their shoulders as you can get them. And then you want to use your knees as you're sitting up and bring them kind of together. So like, like an accordion. So you're just going to bring it together here. Okay. And then keeping your elbows on the insides of their shoulders will help you pick the side that you need to go to to do the arm and guillotine. So if, if George picks a side and puts his head on it, so if he puts his head on my right side, I'm gonna shoot my right arm through and try to sit up and around his head. Or if I were to happen to cut an angle on this right side and his head got here, I would try to sit up and wrap his head up here. Okay, so, uh, so you guys can see when you guys sit up, something that's really important is to keep that, that, same, that same pressure uh, with like this, the, the crunch and then bringing the knees towards your head. So when you sit up, everything's tight. You don't wanna, you don't wanna like keep one and not have the other or like mix in, uh, you know, just like mix control there. You wanna have everything coming in the same direction and staying in tight. That way you keep a good pinch on his body and control him, okay? So here, I'm just gonna take my elbow and kind of pinch his head and his neck and then I'm just gonna drop my, my forearm under his chin. Okay, so when I go here, what's going to happen most of the time is they're going to start to bring their hands to this hand that you have around their neck, okay? So when they do that, it's not really about like driving your hand through as much as, much as it is keeping it there until you can connect your other hand. So as soon as I can get my hand to my wrist, uh, I'm just going to try to get, I'm going to try to use my feet and if I have to, if, his, if, if he's staying up and like really strong and I can't use my, just my upper body to break him down, and just a good rule of thumb would be to do this too, uh, you want to use your legs and walk your legs up until you can get all of your weight onto the side that the, his head is on. So when you guys get here, you don't, there's a bunch of different grips you can do, but the one you're pro you'll probably get the most is if you grab like a grab your palm like this because they're going to be grabbing your hand and trying to pull it away. So catching it here is probably going to be like the most likely scenario. So I go here, George is going to immediately grab my hand. So when he grabs it, he's grabbing it on the thumb side. So the only open side of the hand is the pinky side. So I just grab it here 
and kind of keep it tight until I can walk, 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 and then I can get this angle here. The important thing about arming guillotines is a lot of people do them and they put both their shoulder blades on the mat and then just squeeze and squeeze and squeeze. A lot of people aren't going to be able to, you, you aren't going to be able to finish a lot of people like that because it's just, you're flattening yourself and not really making too much of an angle. So when you guys go here, I want like, I want my knees to be coming up, but I want to be, if his head's on my left side, I want to be on my left hip. I want to be all the way on my left hip and all the way on my left side as far as I can while I keep this really tight and keep my arms and everything's coming in. Remember guys, you want to keep that crunch. So when you go here, I'm pulling this in tight. I'm trying to pull my left arm with my right. Uh, I'm trying to pull my left arm with my right hand this way. So I'm keeping everything here and I'm, I'm like crowbarring it with my body, taking it in this direction. Everything's really, really tight here. You guys got to keep it like coming together. That way that tension stays there. So without me being down there, do you see how his hips are completely from underneath me. So normal close guard go back. Normal close guard, we're like squared up like this, but something I just noticed is that whenever he reaches, goes for his guillotine, he reaches, I'm fighting these hands, he locks his grip, it's an arm in, and now his hips are out from underneath me. So let go for a minute, couch. Look at look at his hips. So he he's out, like he's not in front of me anymore. I'm still in the same position. My head's now pulled, his hands are wrapped around me but he's scooting his hips out that way. Um, that's something I, I didn't know. That's, that's a cool detail, man. So again, go ahead, do it again. Wraps, eye hand fight, he grabs, boom, hips out, and then go ahead, go from here. Here, when you guys get here, the key is just gonna be to keep the squeeze. Some things you, some things you wanna kinda listen for or like try to, try to keep mind of is to, to know whether, you know, the juice is gonna be worth the squeeze or not here is if they start gargling or if they start moving really fast. Because when they start moving really fast and you're squeezing them, that means they're, they're running out of air. Okay, so if you can look for those things and kind of just keep your squeeze. The thing about guillotines is it's not like a, it's not gonna be like a very fast move. So anytime you're squeezing, um, anytime you're squeezing, you wanna, you wanna, you don't wanna put all of your, you know, you don't wanna put all of your, your, your muscle or all of your, energy into it immediately. It's like a steady squeeze. That's the best way to finish any kind of choke really is to go steady and kind of apply across across a, a, a longer amount of time. So. so for example, that match, you said that you locked it on, it was tight and then you heard him gurgling and then he said, it's tight, it's tight. And then that let you know, oh shit, time to put 100%, put all the juice on there Let's finish this guy, right? So the, that for that example, the gurgling, and then Heath was able to also see that it was tight. That was for you, your cue, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Just listening for that little like, especially if if I can if because I heard him gargle and then I heard he say it's tight. So that's when I kind of knew to like, Boom. just do everything. Like put all my put everything into it because I knew I was gonna be able to finish it at that point. Okay. So, so. here. Sitting up, getting the hips out. So remember guys, if he's heads on your left side, you want your hips out on on uh, on your right side. So look, my, his head's on my left, my hips are out on the right, and my guard is as high as it, uh, wait, scoot back, I think I'm out of the other way. Like, there you go. So my hips, I have his head on my left side, arm in, My I'm pulling my elbows, I'm going to pull my elbow as deep as I can um, and keep it really tight here, but my hips are out and I'm walking my legs up as high as I can get them, okay? So when I go here, I'm bringing everything this way. I'm going to bring my elbows almost like pinching them together into my ribs and I'm just going to use my legs to pull my hips into his body and then take try to take his chin towards his hips. So here. <coughs> oh, yeah, that's tight. And just maintaining that, even if they have a hand, one hand in. Yep. So that's where the kind of the grip with the the outside of the pinky comes from. Because as soon as I go here, he's gonna go to the inside of my wrist. Right. My thumb is on the inside, so then I can use the grip on the outside of my hand to go here and now mm -hmm. like really like really pull my hand away for real. If I go here. 
<coughs> I choke myself. If I keep, if I hand fight how I'm supposed to, and then you lock it on, I choke myself even more. It actually is what it feels like. So, yeah, that's fucked up. Um, it works. Proof's in the pudding. Yeah, what about, okay, so I have another question. Because can you just kind of go down? If we're here, is this something you could chase where you're trying to break the posture down and he's up? Because it almost seemed like if I'm postured up and you're able to like posture up and come up with me like this in this position, could you chase if the hip bump, for example, is a popular move, it's not here, the Kimura is not here, is this somewhere where you could wrap the guillotine and go for it from here? Yeah, the, the Kimura, the Kimura uh, or the hip bump is actually a really good combo because even like not even really looking for the Kimura, if I just sit up and I can get behind your elbow, yeah. your, your, your like nature is to bring your head closer to the center. Yeah, so as soon as you drop back. the, sh like as, as soon as you drop that shoulder in, you're basically wrapping your head up. I see. For me, okay. uh, anyway, so then cutting and then the angle. A hand plate here, here, here. This is what I mean by getting your hips out, guys, is like getting this head's on my right side and I'm on my right hip, but they're over here. I see. And then cutting the angle. One, two. Awesome. So you can chase, this is something you can chase, whether my posture's broken, whether my posture's up, you can come up and just wrap it and get it, okay? Um, Super up. versatile. Uh, would you mind to just do a couple, just live uh, on me, just hit them. Uh, we'll do a couple, me down, me up. That way they can kind of just get a couple different angles. Looks at it like this, okay? So. Go ahead and just go for it. Mm -hmm. Hey. Yeah, you know that's that's killer, man. I, I'm I'm trying to put my hand in there and if I have my hand in there, even preemptively, as he's reaching for it, he, he doesn't care. And if I keep my hand in there, I feel like it actually chokes me even faster. So, um, yeah, that was badass. Good shit, man. Uh, guys, subscribe to the YouTube channel. We're going to be pumping out tons of more uh, content here. Uh, more techniques from just all the world-class guys we have here, including Jacob Couch, um, Heath Pettigrew, of course. Um, his are going to be a lot more rare and limited, so be on the lookout for those. Um, and then just in the comments, make sure you type if you guys have any requests on what you guys want us to show you. Um, if you want to see Couch and Spatch taking a bath together or something, I don't know, anything, whatever you guys want. Um, we're here for you guys. We're here to help and improve the jiu-jitsu community as a whole. So um, just, just let us know. Um, that's it, you got anything for the YouTube family out there? Subscribe. You heard it. All right, back. Cool. Shit, and that was, shit, that was